laugh like hell. Let's have some fun doing it. It's a big part of it. But it's just not waste. It's just not waste any time or energy. It's all about what we can collect that each and every day. It's time for another edition of the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Bill Jones inside the Academy Sports and Outdoor Studios here at the Star in Frisco, joined by Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy inside the Ford Center as the Cowboys take on the San Francisco 49ers, returning home for a noon kickoff at AT&T Stadium. And coach, let's uh, start with that 30 to seven win over Cincinnati uh, last week. Great to get back on the uh, winning track and probably great to have a normal work week this past week here at the star, right? Oh, definitely, Bill. I agree with you on all the above. It was, it was, it was a great win for us. I mean, especially with, you know, some of our young players getting an opportunity. So just so proud of our, our young DBs, you know, to step in there and, and uh, be, a, be a part of an ex excellent win for us on the road. So uh, obviously it was, it was good to you know see Andy have the success going back to Cincinnati, but you know I clearly felt that we, we played well in all three all three phases, and uh, you know now we come back into a normal seven day week. You know we're in a virtual format Monday and Tuesday, uh, but you no know, now we're focused on on the San Francisco 49ers. But yes, it's definitely to be back back to hopefully a normal schedule. Where, where do you uh, sense that your team is now from a from the mental standpoint, getting that win under their belt and, and going into this game now? Oh, I mean, definitely needed it. I mean, it's, it's definitely a shot of confidence, and that's what, you know, the biggest thing you, that in my opinion, comes from winning. You know, the, the ability to, get, to have the confidence of the past performance, you know, carry it forward into your preparation. You know, it's about stacking success and building off it each and every week. And, uh, you know, we'll definitely have some of that coming out of the Cincinnati game. But more importantly, uh, to, to win this, this next game, I think we'll definitely, you know, put us a step further where we want to definitely where we want to go so uh, that's the that's the outlook where do you where do you sense the things are offensively a couple of uh, solid offensive performances in a row for Andy Dalton the offensive line in front of him uh, as well and in particular I love the 88 yard drive in the second quarter uh, and the mix of the run and the pass on that drive and really throughout the game last week against the Bengals yeah definitely I'll, I'll start with the drive I think it's so important because I, I think it's you know the combination of, of coaching and Kellen and and, and really the players uh, just just know that it's it's okay to go the long way because there's, there's so many positive things that come out of a long drive you know f for you offensively you know, obviously you're keeping your defense off the field you know and I think anytime you get above five six seven plays on a defense you know the, the field definitely tip tilts a little bit towards you um, so you know because the defenses you know may have a bend not break mentality but you know it's it, they to possess the ball that long and just the, you know, the confidence. I think you're seeing the, the ability of you know, our, our offense to execute you know, time and time again. I, I know, you know, I don't know exactly where we're ranked in long drives during the, you know, in the National Football League, but I know we're probably in the top five uh, in that. It's something that we're, we're doing better more and more each week, and, and Andy's a big part of that. Of course, uh, like yourself, the uh, 49ers have gone uh, through a number of injury issues throughout the season. Uh, on their defense, uh, Fred Warner has been playing at a high level at middle linebacker. We'll see what his availability is on uh, Sunday. But what do you expect out of, out of a 49er defense this year? Well, I, they're not going to change. I, I think just, you know, not only do they have excellent players, they do have excellent depth. So, uh, and everything they do starts with that front four. Um, and, and just, it's a unique. Uh, it's, a, it's a scheme that you know I've competed against in, in Detroit for years. Um, it's similar to what they do in Philadelphia. You know, it's you know, as far as the angled stance and the four-point stance, and, and really the the angle and the charge that the D line uh, comes after you with. So it's it's definitely a time clock game. You know, and they have a very instinctive, excellent linebacker group, and and this is definitely an outlook where we know we we're gonna have to run the football a certain way and. And how we do that and, and the ability to, to have the long drives will be a big part of our success come Sunday. All right, we're just getting started on this edition of the Mike McCarthy Show. Up next, it's David Moore, the Dallas Morning News. The Mike McCarthy Show, presented by Reliant, is brought to you by AT&T, Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer, built for Texas, built for you. The University of North Texas, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. And by Reliant, an NRG company. 
This segment is brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. Welcome back to the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy. And it's time to go to the SportsDayDFW.com home studio of one David Moore to discuss all things Cowboys. Hello, David. And uh, I know that you probably originally had plans this Sunday night. Well, now you can have plans on Sunday night because this game got flexed from Sunday night to noon on Sunday. How do you, how do you think Jerry Jones feels about that? Oh, I think this hits home pretty hard with Jerry because, uh, you know, through the years, Jerry has always taken great pride in the fact that uh, this team retained uh, the image it did. And, and it was on primetime TV on, on not just Sunday and Monday nights, but usually uh, would be the highest rated games, uh, you know, throughout the course of the season. Now to actually have a Dallas-San Francisco game let that sink in. If anyone would have said that back in the 90s, what would you have thought? But but now, you know, this game being flexed out moves to noon. Not only that, but you have a New York team that's under 500 and Cleveland moving into that spot. I, I think this is uh, um, this is hard for Jerry to deal with because, you know, even in a lot of these eight and eight years, uh, the Cowboys were still much must watch TV. Uh, the networks would not move them because the interest was so high in either loving the Cowboys or hating the Cowboys that they weren't about to move them out of that spot. Uh, the fact they did in this time, first time you can remember in a long, long time, uh, I think that registers with Jerry. Well, just think what it's going to do for CBS early window ratings, though, on Sunday. That's another way to look at oh, it, right. spoken by a true CBS employee here. All right, uh, <laughs> let's let's talk about the possibility of back-to-back -back wins for this team. It's been a while since this team has had back-to-back -back wins. Yeah, you know, every coach has a checklist of what he wants his team to accomplish coming in, especially a, a coach in his first year like Mike McCarthy. I think Mike McCarthy wanted to check the box on this back in September, not in December. Uh, but that's where they're faced now. I mean, this team has not won back-to-back -back games this year. But this is not just a Mike McCarthy thing. You go back, the Cowboys, and to me this is a little bit hard to believe, but the Cowboys have not won back-to-back -back games in more than 15 months. This extends well back into early last season. Uh, until you start to stack success on top of each other, you're not going to gain any momentum. You're not going to get close to the goals you set for yourself as a team. And, and the other thing the Cowboys need to work through here is it's not just winning back-to-back -back games. You know, they've had three other opportunities to follow up a victory with a victory earlier this season. And they've been outscored 117 to 57 in those games. So they really haven't been that competitive. Uh, what Dallas does against San Francisco, if they're able to build on the success that they showed in Cincinnati, uh, I think is a key indicator for this team in the final quarter of the season. And uh, finally, David, uh, where do you think the Cowboys are big picture wise in the secondary as we approach the end of this season? Obviously, Trayvon Diggs has been a big positive and he's back on the practice field this past week. Yeah, you know, we've spent so much time and focus and justifiably so talking about all the injuries in the offensive line and what that's done. Uh, the defensive secondary isn't far behind as far as all of the uh, what injuries have, have forced that group to shuffle uh, often during the course of a game uh, beyond what they wanted to. But it, it, it's starting to look a little bit better here for these final three games. Uh, Trayvon Diggs is coming back. Uh, Anthony Brown is working on a limited basis. Uh, Chidabe Awuzia. Uh, should also be back, was back at practice this week. And uh, Donovan Wilson was doing some limited stuff and there's a chance he could work back in. I doubt that all of these players will be able to work back in for this San Francisco game, but it's looking like they'll be able to return before the season is done. And a lot of those guys did some good things and I, I think they want to get back there and reinforce it at the end. One other player we should mention is Jordan Lewis. Uh, I think he's played very well as a slot corner in these last few games. All right, David, we appreciate it. Enjoy your Sunday night off for a change. And when we come back here on the Mike McCarthy Show, one of the positive position groups on this team, wide receivers. This segment was brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. 
The Mike McCarthy Show powered by Reliant Energy continues now. Bill Jones inside the Academy Sports and Outdoor Studios. It's the Cowboys and the San Francisco 49ers. And let's talk wideouts for this Cowboys team. There was a lot of optimism heading into the season. And when you look at the last couple of weeks, the production is up for the wide receivers. Rob Phillips has more. Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, C.D. Lamb. Three times a thousand. It was a popular preseason storyline. Could the Cowboys' top three receivers become just the sixth trio in league history to each post a thousand yards? They believed it could happen. With three games left, despite the offense being decimated by injuries this season, it's technically still possible. At 942 yards, Cooper looks almost certain to reach a thousand for the fifth time in his six year career. He's been a model of consistency. He's 80 catches ranked 10th in the league and first for Dallas. Yeah, I think he's so quick and he's got such good feet and uh, at the top of his routes, he's so good. And so, um, you know, I saw it from afar for a long time and then now getting to work with him and now getting to see it firsthand and, and, and getting to the throw to him. I mean, you can definitely feel that. And so, uh, I mean, it's, you feel fortunate to have a guy like that that can uh, do so much. He's a vertical threat. He's also uh, can take slants and get yards after catch and all that kind of stuff. So he's uh, got all the talent that you want. Lamb, the dynamic first round draft pick, has 742 yards. If he averages 86 the rest of the season, he would become just the 10th rookie wideout to reach 1,000 in the last 10 years. Gallup needs 118 yards a game to reach 1,000 for the second straight year. He's topped 100 yards just once this season, but with an offense this talented, there's only so many passes to go around. He's just fine with that. If I get one pass a game, I'm perfectly fine with that if we win the game. You know, it's, it's, it's fine. Um, if we play good football and I get one pass, you know, for the whole game, I'm fine with it, playing good football. It's not like, you know, I'm over here demanding, you know, a bunch of passes. So um, it's just, I feel good, you know, we're doing good. I feel good. So three times a thousand, maybe not probable, but it is possible. Aside from wide receiver, the offensive lineup has been a revolving door. Quarterback Dak Prescott started only five games before ankle surgery ended his season. Three other quarterbacks have filled in. Rookie Ben DiNucci, Garrett Gilbert, and Andy Dalton. Four of five projected starters on the offensive line have missed multiple games due to injury. With so much change around them, you can't measure Cooper, Lamb, and Gallup by whether or not they make history this year. Put the numbers aside for a second, and the Cowboys' top three receivers have done exactly what has been expected of them entering the season. They've caused problems for the opposing team's game plan. And with Andy Dalton back the last four games, the passing game has found a groove. That will be important again this Sunday against the 49ers defense and Richard Sherman. For DallasCowboys.com, I'm Rob Phillips. All right, thanks, Rob. The Cowboys hoping for more production out of those wide receivers against the Niners this week. And up next here on the Mike McCarthy Show, the head coach rejoins us. And let's talk Dallas defense. More specifically, veteran defensive lineman Tyrone Crawford stepping up. Welcome back to the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Bill Jones inside the Academy Sports and Outdoor Studios, now rejoined by Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy. Uh, taking a look at this San Francisco 49er team, coach, uh, coached by Kyle Shanahan, who's had great success in this league as an offensive coordinator and now as a head coach in this league. Uh, a Kyle Shanahan offense, what do you expect out of, out of the 49ers? Well, it definitely starts with the run. I mean, there's going to be shift in motion and and how they stress your you know your eye discipline and and create you know angles for the blocking scheme. So and, and really, it starts with the wide outside zone and everything comes off of that. Uh, but it, we, we're, Kyle, I think, is different than some of these other offenses. Is it's it's a multiple run game. You know, the pattern schemes and the you know in the in the counter schemes. I mean, they they they, they throw a lot at you and they have a stable stable of backs and. So it definitely starts with stopping the run, and um, I, I think it's something, regardless of where he's been, 
Uh, it's been a staple of how he uh, how he goes about it. A 30 to 7 win in Cincinnati last week. What, what do you see out of your defense in general, especially in regards to uh, to stopping the run last week? Well, the takeaways. I mean, clearly the, the three takeaways are huge. You can see how it impacts the game. You know, we were plus three as a football team. You know, not only do we take it away, we we did a good job taking care of the football. And you know, the other stat that we keep close track of is takeaway opportunities. So we were in position seven times. To have you know to have a takeaway opportunity and convert to three of them, so we just need to stay after that, and that really shows up in the finish, you know, the pursuit and finish of the defense, and uh, it definitely looked the way it needed to look. It just looked looked the way we wanted to look in Cincinnati, and that we need to carry that forward to Sunday. Of course, uh, third down is such a critical down. Uh, one third down play in particular in the third quarter, Richard Robinson uh, makes a stop on Gio Bernard on a third and six play, a classic form tackle. But I think it, it illustrates uh, what you were going through at the cornerback position. At that point in the game, Richard had an issue with, with an injury, Savion Smith as well. And these are guys that are stepping up uh, when you have so many corners that were down even going into that game. Yeah, definitely. And then Chris Chris Westry went into the game. You know, Burton went into the game. Um, Savion came back. Richard came back. So just the, the whole mechanics of that uh, was was impressive, especially for a young group. So, and, and, and as I've said earlier, it's it, it's a it's it's a group that you you know you're always trying to develop, and usually your younger players have to step up in a role in November December, and that was a, that was a clear example of it. At one point, I was wondering if Al Harris was going to go in the game. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> well, I can tell you, we'd be bumping and running if he's in there. <laughs> there you go. All right, uh, how about Tyrone Crawford? He got a couple of sacks uh, late in the game. And, uh, of course, uh, this is your first year to be around Tyrone. He's been such a re respected member of this team for uh, so many years. And, and great to see him have some success on the field, particularly considering the fact what he's come back uh, from the surgeries after last season. Yeah, definitely. I, I can't say enough about Ty. He's a... He's a, he's a the ultimate pro, um, same, same, same guy every day, you know, work ethic, his leadership, and, and he's definitely a valued member of our football team. So it was great to see him have that success. All right, uh, we continue with more of the Mike McCarthy Show in just a moment. Final couple of minutes of the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy as we get you ready for the Cowboys and the Niners, a noon kickoff on Sunday at AT&T Stadium. And Coach, how about we close out the show with special teams, and in particular, how about we talk about your long snapper, L.P. Latisar, as this game against the 49ers will be his 251st NFL game going back to 2005. And uh, with that 251st game, he's played in more National Football League games than any other Canadian-born player, breaking the record of uh, the great kicker, Eddie Murray. L.P. Latisar, how much do, uh, do you appreciate him? Oh, I mean, I, I think when you said 2005, it says it all. I mean, just to, to be able to play, you know, at, at – at, the, at a high level at any position and really is availability too. So, I mean, LP is, you know, same same guy every single day, you know, in the wealth of experience that he brings, you know, he's been a real asset to Hunter, you know, uh, when he joined us as our new punter. So, um, I, I tell you, it's, it's, it's of great value when you have, you know, that type of leadership in your special teams. Isn't it uh, one thing too about long snappers, that's a guy that you want to be anonymous, don't you? And he's been pretty anonymous throughout his career, which means he's been pretty perfect throughout his career. Yeah, definitely. If, if they're talking about this, that's a great point. So, but uh, just, I mean, what, 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 what an honor. I mean, 251 games. I mean, that's, that's incredible. So, uh, I, can't, I can't tell you. I mean, it's, you, you think about that. I mean, that's 2005. I mean, that, that's an incredible career. And, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been cool working with LP. Hey, that's so long ago. You were with the San Francisco 49ers in, in exactly. 2005. Exactly. All right. Well, good luck against those uh, 49ers on uh, Sunday at AT&T Stadium. We appreciate it, Coach. And we appreciate all of you joining us here for the Mike McCarthy Show. And we will see you again next week. The Mike McCarthy Show, presented by Reliant, was brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Built for Texas, built for you. Bank of America, the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.
and by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches' film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass.